Is it possible for factoring to really fail us? Yeah, it is. If you look at this problem that I have up here, x squared minus 2x minus 7 is factorable, but not factorable across rational numbers. It's actually going to be factorable across irrational numbers. Now, I really think it's important to make sure you know how to factor, but what about when a problem is not factorable across rational numbers? It can get pretty difficult. So what I want to do in this video is let you know that there's an easy way to solve the quadratic as well as to rewrite it in factored form. But the one thing I do not want you to do is to make these two mistakes. The first mistake is to just go ahead and simply maybe add out the seven on both sides and then say a x squared minus two x is equal to a seven. Now, a lot of students here, they have factoring on their mind, right? So they'll factor out the x and they get an x minus two is equal to seven. And then rather than using the zero product property, they just say, well, why don't we use the seven product property? Or I have really no idea what you would call it or what you would do, but you cannot do this. Okay. So when we, we use the zero product property is when we have a product equal to zero, not any other number. So this does not work. Another mistake that I see students will do is just like the inverse operations. When we have a X squared minus two X minus seven, they want to go ahead and isolate the term. So what they do is they'll add a two X to both sides and they'll add the seven to both sides. And therefore they get a X squared is equal to a two X plus seven. Now they say, well, to solve for X, I can just simply take the square root of both sides. So therefore X equals a plus or minus the square root of two X plus seven. But remember when you learned like the vocabulary cannot be in the definition, we can't solve for X when X is part of the solution. That's not really telling us what the answer is. So please, when you have a quadratic, please do not do this as well. So when factoring fails us, we can't factor. We don't want to make these two mistakes. What is it that we can do? Well, in my last video, what we talked about was the easiest way we could solve quadratics. And the easiest way to solve quadratics was using inverse operations, not inverse operations like this. We can't use inverse operations here, but inverse operations when we only have one variable. Remember, this problem was simple because we only had one variable. So therefore, all we needed to simply do was apply our inverse operations to then go ahead and solve. And again, just a kind of quick little refresh, inverse operations, go ahead and solve. Okay, so that's what we did in the last video. But in this video, we have a problem because our equation from last video is not in the form that we have for this equation. As you can see here, we actually have two X's. We have an X that's being squared and we have a linear X. So we can't apply the inverse operations, right? I already talked about how that's not going to work. So what is it we can do? The main thing I want you to recognize is this equation is in the form of X squared plus a B X plus C is equal to zero. And the equation that was really easy to solve was in the form of like a X minus H quantity squared plus K equals zero. Now don't be get worried about the positive or the negatives or the H K or B or C that's really irrelevant at this point. What I want you to understand is this equation that we're having trouble with is in this format and this equation, which was easier is in this format. And what is really the main difference? Well, the really the main difference is this is written as a binomial squared. That's what give us this singular X that's being squared. If we wanted to expand this out, right? This is literally just a X minus H times a X minus H. I want you to pay close attention to what we get. We get an X squared minus a two H plus an H squared, right? And then that's really plus a K equals zero. And the reason why I wanted to do that is I want you to see this is what we call a perfect square trinomial and all perfect square trinomials can be factored down to what we call a binomial squared. So then what do we do? What do we do when we have this equation and it's written in this standard form and we want to rewrite it as a perfect square trinomial? Well, what we can do is kind of recognize what is the value H that is going to create a perfect square trinomial. Now, sometimes this gets a little confusing when I have a seven over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the seven to the other side. Therefore, I have an X squared minus a two X equals a positive seven. And again, what I'm trying to look for is what is going to be this H squared that's going to create this perfect square trinomial. Now, writing an H squared might be a little confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the value C. So what I'm looking for is again, what is the value C that's going to create this perfect square trinomial? So now what I want you to do is look at this relationship here. And if I want to go from a negative to H and I want to go ahead and create this H, H squared, that's what I'm trying to find. Like, how can I recreate that? Well, what I can do here is I can divide it by two and then I can square it. And when I do that, what I get is an H squared because it doesn't matter if this is a negative or a positive. Once it gets squared, that's going to give me the H squared. So if you take a look at this example, don't worry about the X's. What we're doing is we're concerned about the coefficient here, only the negative two. So if I want to find my value C, all I'm simply going to do is take my middle term, which is a negative two divided by two, and I'm going to square it. 
negative two divided by two is negative one. Negative one squared is going to equal a positive one. Now in your class, we might summarize this as a B divided by two, B is the middle term, quantity squared. That's gonna equal your C. That's gonna equal the value that's going to create our perfect square trinomial. So when I do that, I get an X squared minus two X plus one equals seven. But remember, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation, right? We just can't randomly add a one on an equation and still call it an equation. So we have to keep things balanced. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a one over here. Now, I want you to recognize this. This is a perfect square trinomial, right? This is the, in the form exactly what we are looking for. So when I take my middle term divided by two and square it, it's gonna always find me the value C that I'm looking for that's going to create my perfect square trinomial. Now I just need to be able to factor this down. So what exactly is this value? If you go back to this expanded form, if this is X squared minus two H plus H squared, these are going to be both of your H's. So basically the square root of whatever your value of C is. So so H is basically going to be the square root of your value of C. And then notice if the middle term is negative, then my two binomials are going to be negative. And conversely, if my middle term was positive, then my two binomials would also be positive. So therefore I can factor this now to an X minus one quantity squared is equal to eight. And now I want you to see this is in the form, just like in last video, which was very easy to solve using our inverse operations. So now what I'm simply gonna do to go ahead and solve this, just take the square root of both sides and then add a one. Okay, and just remember when you're taking the square root, right? I can break up eight, I can break that up into a four times two. That's how I got the two um, square root of two. Also remember whenever you're introducing the square root, make sure you're including the plus or minus. Now again, at the beginning of this video, I talked about how we can still write this in the factored form. These are gonna be the solutions, the roots of the equations. But what if I wanna look at the factored form, right? The only reason why we want to solve by factoring is so we can use the zero product property, which makes life easier. But if a problem is not factorable, now using this method is gonna be exactly what we're gonna need, want to do. But again, what if I wanna know what would that factored form be? You challenged me at the beginning of the video to be able to factor this. What is the answer? So to do that, all I'm gonna do is set each of these solutions equal to X. And now set them equal to zero because if I was going to provide the zero product property, each solution would be set equal to zero. And those solutions that are set equal to zero are indeed the factors. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the factored form of this equation, which is going to again be equal to a X squared minus two X minus seven, which is also equal to a X minus one quantity squared minus eight. So either form is going to work, but hopefully you understand when something like this is difficult to factor, using this process of creating this perfect square, so therefore we could solve using inverse operations is gonna be very helpful. And then just to go to factored form was really not that bad. So factoring failed us, but that is okay. In the next video, what I wanna do is explore this process a little bit more and work through more examples, even the harder ones, to help you solve any quadratic. Because this technique, we can solve for any quadratic, if it's factorable or not. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.